And that giant cacophony tells you that you're back <laughs> with the Power of Three podcast, the podcast that loves dogs. Yes, we do. I'm we Kenny Smith. Do. I'm not K9. And I'm David Steele. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We might be interrupted today because I'm dog sitting for a friend at the moment. So if if Harry makes a bit of noise or breaks wind like he did moments before Kenny started recording, I, I can only apologise, listener. Harry's a chocolate Labrador and he's a big, he's a big silly. Are you a big silly? Yeah, I'm getting guilt trip eyes, listeners, because I'm talking to Kenny about Doctor Who not paying full attention to Harry. So we'll see how we get on. How are you, Kenny? Are you all right? I'm very well, thank you. It's yes, it's all good. Just um, busy, busy, busy. I'm currently doing a bit of work on cottage hospitals, which sounds like um, Ashbridge Cottage Hospital or something like that. But no, I'm not actually doing that. Yes, we all like a cottage hospital. We can leave that hanging there for like. So what are we talking about today? Because I've lost count, quite frankly, I've lost my place. Well, we're talking about the fantastic new release from Character Options that came out yesterday as we speak. They were just released uh, with the 15th Doctor and Ruby Sunday. Of course, yeah, I, I saw a bit of excitement about that at the weekend. I thought for some reason it was going to be happening on Sunday and I was I was working on Sunday. So I, I forgot all about it actually. So it's quite exciting. I need to. I've not had time to actually go and have a look at them and decide whether I'm not going to well, get it or not, or if I'll or if I'll wait for the um the individual releases. Let's. But Kenny, well, of course, listeners, because he's because he's in the know and he has friends in high places. He's been sent them already, so he's going to hold them up now, so I can look at them via Zoom. So yeah. that that'll be rewarding, won't it? It will. So this is the packaging. Oh, wow. So two pack like that's the brick. Yeah and it's all together so then out comes this one which would be sure. 15th okay. packaging mm-hmm. and then the other one is that one there with a right. little picture there of that, that little Ruby. that little character biography on the back it is indeed and these are vortex edition which are the new top of the range stuff from character but i'll of oh, character will tell us about those later but what you really want to see are these guys don't you blimey Look at that, and you know, I'll just adjust the light here so you can get a proper look. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, it looks, it does look, it's, aye, it's uncanny. It does look really like him. I like the, de- yep, you can see the detail on the trainers. Yep, it's got that G it's shape. Got- and of course, this is the first oh. figure to have psychic paper. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow, that surprises me. Yeah, surprises me, me too. But look at this, hang on, this is him sitting still, and now look, hip action. Oh wow! Interesting. That's that'll be useful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For when he's dancing. Yes, I, I mean, I was articulation is a good thing, I suppose. You know, me being a big comic book guy, I've got a massive collection of DC Direct mm-hmm. action figures, and some of the, the posing and the articulation of them left a lot to be desired at times. Mattel did a good run of DC action figures. There, they were a bit better as far as sort of articulation and, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm, if you look at this, very good. Very, you get knee rotation as well. Okay. And a little bit of rotation at the elbows as well. So right. quite okay. impressive because he comes with his psychic paper, his mm-hmm. sonic there, which is absolutely bang on. And you also get a little boom explosive pad, which you can stand on as well. Excellent. With one foot, you can position him so he's got one foot off and one foot on, diddle diddle up dumpling. Okay, if we don't drop that down the back of the couch or let the cat run away with it then. <laughs> No, definitely not. And then, of course, we come to the other figure in the set. So we've got little Ruby. Again, quite a stunning likeness. Yeah, they're very good. They really are. You can definitely tell who it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And so even, I don't know if you can see the detail there. Look at that. Up yeah, close. Yeah, really good. Painted nails. A really good sculpt. It's clear they spent quite a lot of time on them. Yeah, I mean, they're always recognisable as who they're supposed to be. But these, yeah, they're very sharp. Shooty especially. Yeah, facial details. 
which episode of the costume is based on? Um, this looks like it is from the end. Yeah, from the from the end of um, Christmas one. So he's got right. the the brown leather coat and stuff. But also yeah. look at this neck. There's no longer just sort of head fixed on. It actually is proper articulation where you can right. nod him and everything like that. So it's yeah. not just fixed mm-hmm. on. So yeah, he's quite impressive that way. Not bad at all. Yeah. Bad and, at all. Yep, and you get Ruby with her mobile and her little bag. So Excellent. Yeah. I believe it's is it thirty nine ninety nine on the character website, is that right? That's correct, yes, that includes postage for the right. two of them. So no bad records. So without any further ado, Kenny will now have a, a play there with Al about how these figures came around. And now sitting opposite me, it's that well not opposite physically, but across the screen, uh, live from that London ish or is it slow? I can't remember. Anyway, where are you today, Al? <laughs> I'm in Londonshire, Scotland's biggest borough. Oh, yes, that <laughs> one. <laughs> and to find you looking very well in a, an office surrounded by interesting things behind you? Uh, I think it's probably Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff. Um, it is, I can see the logo at the back. Yeah. Yes, I snuck upstairs, basically. No, I'm in the I'm in the character office as I as I always am for our chats, Kelly. I always I always am. This is a terrible camera angle. It's doing it's doing me no favors. But it's I'll okay. Come. <laughs> Only I can see it. It's fine. And because you're looking, it's just because you're looking svelte. It's just because you've been to the gym and you're feeling it. That's why I can see it with those muscles rippling. Actually, I was ill all last week. I was ill and I felt absolutely horrible. And last night, I actually went for a run for the first time in a week and <laughs> and did really well, which means I won't be able to run probably for about three days because that's what normally happens. I haven't run for a while and then I run and I'm like, oh my God, this is brilliant. And then this, you struggle to sort of get back into it. But um, yeah. Yeah, no, it was good to uh, actually uh, do something again. Yeah, well, uh, I'm glad you're well and uh, on the road to recovery. And of course, you must have been delighted by the an incredible reaction after the 15th Doctor and Ruby figures were revealed. Yeah, I am. Um, it was, it was, um, yeah, it's been quite a pleasant couple of weeks actually because the the 15th Sonic came out. I think I think it's fair to say that still is a little bit marmite that um, that it still divides fandom. Uh, uh, I, I, st- I still see lots of comments on forums about you know some people like the design, some people don't like the design. I always say the same thing: play with the toy, and then I think you might change your mind. But it's cool. But yes, the finally getting the visuals out of the ruby and the 15th uh, action figures was was brilliant so I was, yeah i was very generally very pleased with the reaction <laughs> it, it's always good when the worst comment you can find is somebody saying i really like these i'll give them nine out of ten but i don't like the plastic <laughs> but, <laughs> what type of plastic would you like yeah, we just auton plastic killers. <laughs> yeah, auton plastic. Yeah, there's some sort of slightly. You know, there's always people that are like, I'm good. I can't. I can't give it a ten out of ten. So I will give it nine out of ten and find some, some excuse. <laughs> so yes, it was uh, broadly yes went down extremely well. I'm sure there will be a bunch of the usual naysayers who will find fault. And I'm sure when people get them in hand, there will also be people that will find something that they don't like or, you know, whatever. But yes, generally, broadly speaking, very happy, very happy. Yeah. Now, of course, the whole process for working on these began quite a while ago. Could you maybe give us a wee idea as to how long ago and you know, when the scans were done and how you found getting them done? Oh, gosh, I can't give you a definitive timeline, but I know it was a long time ago because these took, it was certainly last year, and these ones took much longer than they should have done. There was, there was a few, I'll be straight up honest, I've, I've sort of mentioned on the forums, but there was a few issues with these, so um, I can sort of give you a sort of potted history of what happened. But in essence, it starts out with a scan I wasn't able to attend the scan this time, so I, I got somebody else to go in my stead. The scan of Shooty went very well. I think it's arguably safe to say the scan of Millie didn't go quite as well to plan. There was certain people at that scan who rushed, for want of a better word, my 
well, my sculptor, but also my scanning guy, Ed, and were actually blatantly quite rude to him, which really pissed me off. Had I been there, I would have certainly had words, but, you know, if somebody sent down at great expense by the company representing us to do a job and then they get they're spoken to rudely I do not like that I do not like that at all so I was not happy about that and it, 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 and it what it actually meant was we had one we had a limited time to do the scan of her and it was a more compromised scan than I would have liked it to be because I was like to do two so that we have a backup which we didn't get on her so there were some changes made to her data further down the line to, to sort of soften her look. I, did, I didn't quite like the first iteration, which was to do with the scan being compromised. So it was, it was slightly changed. Then that data is then turned into a tooling model, and I think I've spoken about that before, where each of the individual parts is created in sort of resin at about 5% up, give or take, depending on the material. And then those are used to make the electrodes which are burnt into the steel to make the parts that are molded. However, historically, we have a relationship with a tool shop in China who have, like I say, historically been very good, but they've done less and less as the years have gone on. And tools were made, transferred to the factory. I got the first shots and I basically said, have you guys actually to our engineering group, and I shouldn't cuss them, but I'm, but I'm going in this case. But as they said, we got, have you guys actually played with these and checked them? Because they, they literally came, the figure kept figures, figures, plural, came taped to a bit of board with a, a sticky post-it note and one comment. And I, I literally wrote an essay on both figures back, listing my problems with it, or each of them, because these are fundamentally different figures. The whole way of the, the they are well, you know, you've seen them, but the whole way they um, articulate and how they articulate and the fit and everything is completely different from anything we've done before. Plus, also, it's the first sort of Doctor of Color, sort of in the sense of not a cameo art. Uh, well, yeah, so that's, that's, that's denigrating Joe Martin's point, but it, but you know what I mean. So it's their first Doctor of Color. So I was like, we've got to get this right. But then over and above that, I was like, I'm really not happy with this. So I kicked up merry, merry hell, I think it's safe to say, broadsided uh, a lot of people. And the tooling was then sent, which should never have gone to the factory in the first place. It wasn't at a point where it was ready to go to the factory because of all the issues. So the tooling was then sent back to the tool shop to get repaired and then, or not repaired, but refined. Then there was more shots came to me and I said, these are incrementally better, but here is my slightly smaller essay of things that are still wrong with the figures that you haven't fixed from the first time round. And then they did in fairness fix 95% of the issues, but there was a couple of bits. One was Shooty's coat, one was shoot his head on the side of his neck there was a horrible part line gate mark and I just said I'm not accepting these and they couldn't fix it and they said well we haven't got a choice we've got to go back and remake these parts and I said well I didn't screw this up go back and remake the bit you know it's not you know don't ask me just can I get on and do it and fix it so that happened and that was a bit of a delay and then I was sitting in Hong Kong and the figures came in and I went, these are absolutely fabulous. They look absolutely lovely. And then I sort of said, so why, why, why is Ruby Sunday tilting you know, five, five degrees to port? Because <laughs> she was standing up. And they were like, oh, is she? And I was like, yes, she 100% is. So it turned out there was an issue. There had been another issue that for some reason they'd put bowl joints on her boots, on the top of her boots, which was the wrong type of joint to use anyway. So that had been changed and altered. But then it turned out that literally when she was standing up, there was but for some reason that it was it was a fit issue, but there was a two millimeter there was a two millimeter difference in leg length, which doesn't sound like much, but when you stand an action figure that's only 100 
150 odd millimeters, 415 millimeters high. She was sort of listing <laughs> quite heavily. So I was kind of like, well, we can, we're not shipping that. You got to fix that. <laughs> so it went back to get that issue fixed as well. So yes, there was just, uh, there was a multitude of problems, partly to do with just carelessness between the tool shop and the factory and other people, some people. So there was there was a bunch of issues which had to get fixed. And I was like, well, I was, I was just an absolute arse about it. I was like, we're not chipping this until it's right. So having blithely said to you all in sundry and having had a target that these would be out in September, that date then sort of started to look less and less feasible. And then on top of that, there was sort of global shipping issues that were sort of starting to, or had been in play for a while. So it was long, complicated. I'm sure I drove people probably almost to the edge of sanity, but where we got to, it was all about just refining the fit. And it is it is such a different style of figure that I think the expectations that I would just kind of accept joints that were a bit slack or gaps that were a bit big and whatever, and I was just like, no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> No, okay, no. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was literally like that for weeks and weeks and weeks. In fact, at one point, I was literally like, I might have to go and tell my boss we've got to scrap this tooling and start again. Because when I first got the shots, it was, it was initially so bad. I was like, wow, this is so bad. I'm junking, it would be several thousand quids worth of tooling. Well, I wouldn't be junking I'd be getting it remade for, for free but that would have really been a major issue so it's fine and actually out the other end of that I think we've achieved probably one of the finest if not the finest action figures we've ever done it's been an absolute ball ache but you've seen them and I, I mean I, I'm happy, happy to hear your candid opinion but um, I, I think these are probably the best action figures we've ever made but yeah. boy we cut our teeth on them oh, <laughs> we really did I mean for me I think the analogy that I came up with you know when from looking at them was you know when you think of like the original you know sort of like the the pack that you know with the, with the pretty solid Eccleston and Rose you start with if that's your VHS you know what you progressed on to you you know you upgraded to dvd but these figures are absolutely blu-ray they are just in fact they're not just they're they're ultra they're 8k the movement in the head the way that the joints are they're completely different they're just it's the detail on them is good i mean i've only just literally noticed right now that ruby has got her black fingernails i hadn't noticed that until now and i've had these figures for what seven eight weeks now Absolutely amazing, and just like the articulation on the waist, the fact you can get, you know, Shooty can sort of move in the spot, the ankle ball joints, just wonderful. And just, but the, I mean, the likeness on Shooty is just utterly incredible. I mean, it's you look at it, and it's it's wonderful. I genuinely cannot believe how good it is. It's I don't think I've ever seen a better action figure ever, and I'm including the Star Wars. The greatest ones of those, including the larger scale ones, where they, they, obviously it's easier the bigger the scale to get a, a likeness. Yeah. I mean, I, I like them. I still have a couple of issues with them. These are the Gen. I mean, it's interesting you made that analogy. These are we call these the Gen Three figures. Mm -hmm. Vortex Edition doesn't apply to all to Gen Three specifically. So Vortex mm -hmm. Edition is just a broad term for a higher spec of figures that we're yeah. bring out under and are beginning to bring out under character options. So that could include some of the original figures just redone better, uh, mm -hmm. higher spec decoration, you know, just showcasing just some of the lovely details and just making them just that little bit more nice. So Vortex is an, is an umbrella terminology. Gen 3 specifically applies to these figures. So these, and that applies to the, you know, that evolution that you've just alluded to. So you have, Generation one figures, series one, two, classic, which all for the most part have, you know, planar joints and slightly high articulation, but slightly more limited articulation. Gen two is the sort of 
what I would call the ball joint shoulders and uh, looking at a slightly higher spec of articulation. And then Gen 3 is this complete, here we are, you know. And and whether they'll continue or change or whatever, you know, who who knows. But uh, yeah, I think definitely best figures I've ever made, albeit, as I say, it's been dragged kicking and screaming over the finish line but i think i think the end result uh, speaks for itself are they perfect no no there's a couple of things i would change definitely uh there's a couple of things that i'm probably well you know actively in the middle of just looking at how we could maybe tweak you know <laughs> do re-releases or whatever but uh yeah very good very good yep so obviously shooty's got several looks what made you go with this one over say like the tartan the tweedy orangey tweedy sort of look for example um, just because on both figures we but specifically the doctor we wanted to get two variants out of both of these figures they are the first complete grounds up figures so the tooling is not insubstantial uh, to say the least but interestingly and somewhat subtly that the the 15th doctor look doesn't change that much between his iterations it's mostly down to color so the color of the shirt the color of the trousers color of the trainers but the uh, difference in although it's not quite canon the difference between the rupees is actually quite stark one is well by the time this goes out it'll probably be out anyway so it won't really matter but one is the black leather jacket look and the other one is the denim the denim jacket look and they're very different, very different, but both actually really cool. But uh, arguably there's a bigger difference between her two figures. But that's the only reason. That was the look that we thought at the time we could get most out of. They have been developed specifically this time round with a view to possibly doing a jacketless version of the Doctor specifically. So, if I'm right, and I think I am, if you take his jacket off, his under T-shirt, it would only need new ball joint arms, and essentially you could have him in his in his sort of T-shirt, and also you know minor changes to the trousers and texture and stuff. We could we could change that. So, so it's a bit more flexible. The ruby figure is probably less flexible in that regard. There's not as much we can do. I think we've got the two. There is stuff we could do. It wouldn't be canon, but there's definitely stuff we could do. But it's arguably it's, it's harder to change her look. Yeah, and there's some great accessories here. I should also point out that Ruby's phone, which I'm holding up here, Ruby's mobile, and here is my mobile. Pretty much the same sort of thing. They've got red red casing with a black bit at the back. So thank you for making a mini version of my phone. Is yes, that exactly where the inspiration came from, Kenny? Yeah, yeah. nothing to do with Ruby. Ruby, Tuesday, Ruby Sunday, Ruby Tuesday. No, <laughs> Ruby Tuesday, Ruby Sunday. Yeah, just lovely fact you've got her wee bags there, her mobile, and the Doctor Scott is Sonic. The yeah, one paper thing and the, the boom your listeners, they, the, the Ruby's bag. There's a very specific way that it sits on, and it's an absolute bugger to get. If you get it wrong, and you go at it cold, and you're like, "How do I get this bag to sit? How do I get this bag to sit?" and it and it won't sit right, and you'll be like, "This is really freaking annoying." But there actually is a very specific way that the bag sits, and if it sits in that way, it works. Because is it under? Her, is it over the left shoulder and under the lapel of the jacket to help? Yeah, hold it down? It's slightly under the lapel of the jacket on her left. Then it goes down the back, but it goes under the coat and under the sort of strap that dangles down. Right. And, and if it's placed like that, it will fit. So it's kind of visible exactly where it is in the shop that it was inspired by, which is where she's carrying her shopping to the front door in the Christmas episode. And the bag is sort of hanging in front. And it's a very, like I say, it's a very specific pose. But so, is, that uh, it? is that it properly? Oh, I can't. And he is too damn small. Turn it around. Uh, no, so the bag is more to the front. So the bag is, you know, oh, okay. so you can hang it like that. But if you bring it, I don't have one here to show you. Okay. No, so imagine, imagine it goes across oh, okay. the torso. Yes. The bag is kind of slightly to her left. Yep. But the strap goes up under the collar, then it goes down over her back and under the right-hand side of the jacket. But it actually right. 
appears under the jacket at the at the back. Yep. I hope okay. that all the listeners are having fun playing along. Oh God, it's falling off now. I'll I'll work on it later. <laughs> Plenty of picture. Also, it's nice to get psychic paper for the first time as well. Do you know, I thought we'd done that. It, it was weird. I've had so many comments or seen so many comments about exactly that. But going, oh, finally, after, you know, 17 years, we've got psychic paper. And I'm like, really? I'm sure we did psychic paper. But it turns out, no, we never did it. Well, but we have yeah. now. So it's all good. That's all good. And I think they're magnificent. And as you mentioned, there are the, the variations which are on the way. And they will be the first mass retail figures since the Matt Smith era, I think, if I'm right. Uh, I think that's right. It'll be interesting to see how those do. I think there will be, I think, Doctor Who fans being completists, they will be drawn inevitably like moths to a flame to um, pick up the variants. Weirdly, especially the ruby, which I think there's marginally less than of doctor at retail so there's your chase figure people if you want to if you want if you want to race out so ruby will be the slightly rarer figure at retail whereas it's obviously eeksy peeksy uh in the co exclusive yeah it'll be that'll be interesting the other comment i saw was that and it was it was a side one is that obviously the packaging has been designed so that you can put the figure back in the pack if you if you need to it's very different packaging as well. Fact. Yeah, we wanted to kind of do something. We wanted to do packaging that wouldn't stand up. No, <laughs> <laughs> this was always intended to be two separate packs, but bundled. That was always the intention. It was always my intention. You were buying these as a pair because, you know, it's the TARDIS crew. So that's what's happening. So, yeah, so it was always going to be a bundle. It wasn't going to be an either or option, which. You know, that's and and we held to that, but we wanted to do something a little bit different that we'd and actually the retail packaging kind of reflects a little bit what we've done on the on that pack as well. It's not, it's obviously not quite the same spec. It's a little bit different, but um, you'll see when it comes out that it's just. I mean, I like it just as much actually. I mean, it's, it's hard. Yeah, once you once you extract your fibers worth of postage from what you're buying on the CEO website, the actual uh, uh, retail figures are basically absolutely on a par. There's no less deco. There's less accessories, but mm-hmm. the, the deco on both iterations is stunning. So as I say, Doctor Who fans being completists, yeah, I think I think there'll be I think there'll be a few people. Yeah. Yep. So when can we expect to see those? Will they be in the shops? I don't too know. Long? I don't know is the honest answer. I know nothing in the in regard to these things. I, I think they're in stock, but I think the plan was they wanted to launch our product before retail ones. So that might be a bit of a hold back, but I think you're talking probably days and weeks less than, you know, I don't think it's going to be a long time, if at all, really. So yeah, cool. Brilliant. Interesting to see how they do. Um, yes. You know, retail is horribly tough at the moment out there. I think everybody knows it's it's still tough times. The retail environment's very tough. So, you know, hopefully these will do well. I can't imagine, you know, a lot of the big retailers will be taking these, but a lot of the small in, and independents and the, and the sort of sci-fi shops, the collectible shops, collector shops, yeah, those guys will be getting these. Fantastic. And as we speak, the first wave of this year's B&M figures have started to arrive in shops and people are loving Davros. Yeah, Davros got a bit of, he got a bit of, I'm still seeing stupid comments like, oh, I'm taking it home to paint the wires. And it's like, no, do what you want, mate. I'm just, it just, it, it, it's a pr- it, it, well, it didn't depress. It doesn't depress me, but I find it quite amusing when I see some comments where, you know, yeah, people can't say it's nice, but they can say, "I'm taking it home to paint the wires." <laughs> so, you know, like I say, do what you want. Do what you want. That's that's perfect for me. Yeah, I think Dad Ross has gone down well. He does look infinitely better than he did before. Uh, I've seen some reviews of the Resurrection Daleks, and uh, people are saying, "But it's not the blue tinge." And again, I'm like. Jesus, go back and watch the program. They're not blue. 
the grey, uh, blatantly grey, uh, that paint colour came from a very specific reference colour that I was given <laughs> for those Daleks because it was black reference. So the sources all say, you know, that's the colour. So it is the colour. Lighting, as we know, is everything. And then you've got the other thing that the, you know, the photocold Daleks are marginally different and mm -hmm. very different lighting and the lenses were red and other stuff. So there's a few things. Oh. But yeah, the resurrection set I, I, I love as well. I think those Daleks are really cool. Yeah. So, and Wave 2 will be with us before too long. Hopefully B&M will put them in the shops before Christmas. <laughs> wow. Well, you never know with B&M. <laughs> no. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. I am gen genuinely glad the B&M stuff has dropped. I think, the, the, I think hopefully, like you say, people are kind of going, ooh, Davros is pretty damn spanky. Resurrection Daleks, pretty damn spanky. Again, I've seen one or two comments with people like, oh, you know, it's another set of bronze Daleks coming for the next drop. It kind of is, and it kind of isn't, as always. Yeah. Well, As they've a, shown oh, me what they look like, and they are different. They are pleasantly, very pleasantly different. Noticeably yeah. different. They are quite different, I would say, arguably. And actually, plans for next year has uh, another set of Daleks that are different again, which could be quite interesting. So, yeah, quite looking forward to that. But yes, I, I hope the B&M stuff goes down well. Fantastic. Well, we'll have to one's still going to be the three-pack, 100%. Yeah, well, we can discuss that next time. And then for Christmas, we'll have another <laughs> Ask Owl. Ask Owl? Why the hell did he do that? What the hell possessed you? What were you thinking? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, there's a few things in the offing. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, interestingly, people have expressed an interest in is, is um, 15's TARDIS. And I went back and we looked and we actually sold that 13's TARDIS, which is his TARDIS, on its own. I thought the colours were marginally different, and I still mean, but it could be down to, it could be, frankly, it could be down to the, the way it's been graded and the algorithm for the HD, which always changes. But it seemed to me like the TARDIS got marginally brighter and a bit bluer. But I double checked um, over the weekend, and apparently it, it's not, it's, just, it's the same Pantone reference. However, the version we put out. For 13 did look a bit boring, a bit dead, flat. So I'm going to see what I can do to fix that. And then that looks like it may be one of the B&M offerings for next year. We'll keep the electronics, we'll update the interior card, but I think hopefully we'll pump that one as a, a, a in limited numbers as a 15th Doctor TARDIS, which would be quite cool. Most definitely would. There we go, another exclusive there. Change the light back to a sensible white colour. <laughs> Sensible white colour. I'm white. looking at it just now. Yeah. yeah. Not sure where that idea came from. Oh, wow. Oh, Al, thank you so much once again for taking the time to have a chat. And we will oh, speak very soon. You keep promising me questions and I never get any. Well, that, you'll get them for they're Christmas. Able, they're you're so abusive that you're just like, hell, I'm not asking them this. <laughs> no, we're going to have that as a Christmas special episode. We'll have another oh, Ask Al. Yes. Are we doing a Christmas? Ask yes, Al? we're doing a Christmas Ask Al. You will be Santa delivering answers. Every single one of those questions better be delivered via a cracker. Let okay. The, oh, With a joke as well. Yes. We get 12 questions, 12 crackers, uh, 12 jokes. People can submit the jokes and... <laughs> what do you call a and Doctor Who writer that lives in the sea and eats plants and plankton? <laughs> I don't know. David A. Manatee. <laughs> you are off the joke committee. Okay. I'm telling you now. Knock, knock. <laughs> you no, <know>, maybe not. <laughs> don't go there. Yeah, let's get, let's get the Christmas question okay. into Kenny, the Christmas jokes into Kenny. And let's do a, let's do a, well, we could do a live blog, couldn't we, Kenny? Oh, we could. That might be fun. I have to find out the tech how to do it, but yes, that's a good idea. Do a live session? Yeah. That sounds like we should get our um, guitars out as well. <laughs> that's a terrible idea. But, yeah. you know. We will do it. We'll get a variation on it. Yes. Well, I've got a shed now where I, where it, that sounds worse than it, <laughs> that sounds worse than it was meant to be, but I've got a maker space, not a shed, maker space. Yes. 
so we could I could bring up a little camera we could probably do yes, something that sounds good to me live blog from Al's shed it's still sounding bad it sounds yeah. bad Ed, but it sounds <laughs> it sounds really terrible yes okay. so yeah that, w- that would be interesting let's do that very soon brilliant yeah well Al thanks again and we'll speak soon cool thanks Kenny take care thank you Al we always appreciate your time thank you Kenny for sorting that out um we're very lucky that Al is, is, is happy to come on and talk to us about all this sort of stuff and as usual keep everyone in the loop as to what's going on and, and bust all the myths yeah definitely that's the, the thing we, and we found out the reason for the delay and also the fact there might be a 15th police box on the way which is lovely excellent not bad not bad you can have too many I'm quite what? happy with that but of course that's not the last we'll hear from Al this year there's still another wave of B&Ms on the way and for Christmas we're going to have an Ask Al episode 2 excellent there's, there's, there's going to be more B&M stuff before the end of the year but there is indeed after the, the Dalek ones that we've talked about mm-hmm. oh, there's more to brief, come brief do you know what do you know what's coming and you could, are you not going to tell the audience but you can tell me later I think <laughs> I think they've been sort of they've been leaked on fora but not everybody will know so Gee. yes interesting well maybe maybe if I've been a good boy maybe Santa will bring me some of them we'll see what happens absolutely well we're nearly out of time and I was thinking, Dave, that given that we like to play it with a tune, I was thinking of something... Oh, oh, you, you like to play it with a tune. You like to risk the copyright strikes. That's true. But we always go with yeah, ones. Bad. I was thinking... <laughs> <laughs> well, given that, you know, with this, with the character here who's played, you know, the actress who plays Ruby, given that, you know, here she is, she's wearing her skorts, her big chunky boots, you could almost say that she's a thoroughly modern Millie. That's very good. Yes, um, yes, I will... Hang on. Take my hat off to you. That's not bad at all. Let's talk to some other ones we've had in the past. That works. Yeah. Well. Yep, let's hand over to Julie Andrews and we'll be back next week. Take care, folks. Bye. Bye. There are those, I suppose, think we're mad. Heaven knows the world has gone to rack and to ruin. What we think is chic, unique, and quite adorable. They think he's odd and sodom and gomorable. But the fact is everything today is thoroughly modern. Check your personality, everything today makes yesterday slow. Better face reality, it's not insanity, says Vanity Fair. In fact, it's stylish to raise your skirts and bob your hair. In a rumble seat, the world is so cosy. If the boy is kissable and that tango dance they wouldn't allow, now is quite permissible. Goodbye, good goody girl, I'm changing and how. So beat the drums, cause here comes thoroughly more.